Let's start off with self ownership, a basic definition. So, how would you define self ownership? Somebody comes up to you, you know, they they never heard of the the uh, liberty philosophy, and uh, and you you mentioned self ownership. How do you define it? Well, if I'm going to define it in a way that people can understand, something that they can take away in the moment and actually apply that to their everyday life, I'm going to say. In, in essence, in a nutshell, and this is very crude way of putting it and left not very refined, it's going to be basically you homestead yourself. So long as you're refining your time, intellect, and labor to maintain your life and improve its quality, then you're in control and you own yourself. So in a nutshell, that's all it is. And so, yeah, self-ownership, the way I would describe it, very basic, very basically put to, you know, the layman that's on the street would be mm – -hmm. um, that you are 100% responsible and accountable for your actions, right? Mm -hmm. So you cannot blame your actions on another person. Now, <laughs> it's very interesting. Let me just explain a little bit of a recent example I had. Mm -hmm. I have a tough time with one family member. <laughs> She's very emotional, and she got very angry at me, and she was even violent in the sense of breaking things, and then she wanted me to say sorry, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't getting violent, I wasn't getting emotional, and I wasn't getting angry. And I basically described self-ownership to her. I said, you have to understand that you are 100% responsible for your actions, as just as I am 100% responsible for my actions, right? If somebody, let's say I go to a store, and they say something that I didn't like, I don't have the right to destroy property, right? Uh, like in the store, and then say that that person offended me, <laughs> insulted me with their words, right? So... You are 100% responsible for your actions, right? So in, in, in the same way, you can never blame another person for the actions that you have committed, that you have taken, right? And one um, example with uh, Walter Black I remember uh, listening to where we say, like, if you take a gun and you kill someone and they say, you know, you're a murderer, you should go to jail. And, they, and then you say, no, 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 I didn't kill him. The bullet killed him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we understand that you know the gun is just a machine right an inanimate object mm -hmm. and the the whole reason that it shot was because we pulled the trigger and why did we pull the trigger because our brain our mind told our body pull the trigger right so ultimately mm -hmm. you know in that case we're always responsible for action so i don't know if that's a long convoluted <laughs> but that's my answer well there's nothing wrong with that uh, it 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 still works with practical application that I put forward. Um, like I said, what I put forward was very crude because there's some other things that need to be understood. Uh, but everything that everything I base self ownership on, everything I base liberty on, everything morality that I that I talk about is always going to be going back to those two uh, books that I wrote. So what you relate, I think, still works uh, very much. So I think the issue is going to be in getting into. So if I ask, what is the foundation of self-ownership. But if I were to expand upon what I had stated earlier, self-ownership is going to be the first boundary of interaction with other individuals. Basically, it's it, self-ownership applies to people who can invoke these, these concepts, who can understand these concepts and the, what their purpose is. And of course, their purpose, self-ownership, is, is to set that boundary so that other people know where they need to stop interacting with you at. That way you can avoid unnecessary uh, transgressions and, and things like that. So if it might be perfectly fine for me to go up and, and put, my, put my arms on, on, on my significant other, but it, it would probably be really weird if I came up and just put my hand on your butt. Um, <laughs> it might make you a little uncomfortable. So we have to set those boundaries, and self-ownership is the first one. And then when you understand self-ownership being all about controlling yourself – in the philosophical sense, and then maintaining your maintaining that control by refining your time, your intellect, and labor to produce the real wealth necessary to satisfy sustenance, shelter, security, and happiness. So long as you are the sole provider for that, taking absolute responsibility, like you were saying, then it ends up being you can translate that into a further further concept getting into morality and, and the non-aggression principle and, and a further boundary so that's, uh, that's where i would have taken it if i were to have write, written a book just on self-ownership alone mm -hmm.